What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be taking you through a little insight um, into the process of taking a coaching client through to top surgery. Um, and we're going to be looking at basically everything that I will do to help prep them for that, any considerations that we've got to make. Um, and hopefully with all of that, you're able to make better decisions for your own top surgery. Um, but also, you know, if you're looking to understand a little bit more, get an insight into what it is that I do with clients in that situation and you yourself are going to be going into that situation at some point, um, then it might just kind of be helpful for you to see that if you're considering taking on any kind of a, a coach to help with that process. So alongside of that, you're going to see some clips from the push session that I'm about to go through. Um, so actually, if you're not, even if you're not interested in all of the info in today's video, Hopefully you will find the clips from the push push session good to watch. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get into the session. Okay, so first and most important thing that we have to talk about, um, to be honest with any client that is wanting to come on board, is timelines. Because if someone is coming along and they're saying, I've got top surgery in two months and I've got to drop a hundred pounds, obviously, <laughs> We've got to be realistic and that's just not going to happen. The sooner that we can begin this process of working together, the better for anybody, but especially if we've got a significant physique change to be made. If somebody's coming on board and actually we're just looking to, let's use the phrase, tidy things up a bit, we're going to be able to probably get away with talking, you know, somewhere between four to six months worth of work but obviously somebody's coming on board and we've got a, a big change to be made we have to be realistic um, and make sure that we're giving ourselves enough time before top surgery so with any client that comes on board one of the first things we're going to do is talk to them about timeline but if you've got a, a, a date and end goal in mind that's got to be our focus and we've got to be realistic with what we're setting ourselves to do now, on top of this, not only do we have to think about the length of the timeline in terms of the physique changes, but what I also really like to do is get in what I'm going to call a maintenance phase right before the client heads to top surgery. So this can be anywhere from sort of like two to four weeks. And this is basically just where our main focus is literally stress management, which we'll go into in a second. And basically just removing any pressure from the client's life and, and taking that focus away from the physique side of things and turning more towards health and during this maintenance phase it's going to be slightly different for everyone but it can be anything from tracking maintenance calories to literally not doing any kind of tracking at all and our focus is just to keep protein nice and high make sure that we're getting like you know fruits and veggies and whole foods in the diet um, and our, our focus now is to just get the client ready in a relatively stress-free environment, ready for obviously what is such a, a huge situation um, of, of top surgery. So not only do we want to make sure that we've got that timeline to take into account the amount of time it's gonna take for the physique changes that we want, but we also wanna make sure that we've got that little period at the end of time where our focus isn't on physique, it's on managing stress, it's on just trying to be as quote unquote healthy as possible. So that's something that I like to get in for every single client that I work with on the way up to top surgery. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this maintenance phase and the stress management. So again, this is something that stress management is, is an important role um, in all clients' lives, regardless of what's going on. Um, but there's a big misconception with stress management. I think people think that I'm going to be telling people, you know, not to be stressed, which is obviously, I mean, if that was something that I could do, um, and if that was possible to just not be stressed, that would be brilliant. But of course it isn't. It's literally about how we deal with the stresses that we face. Um, this is to do with obviously like the nervous system and the sympathetic and the parasympathetic parasympathetic systems um, and just trying to be in that parasympathetic system 
as much as possible, um, which obviously, you know, surgery is a very stressful process not just the actual surgery itself, but the run up to that surgery. There's all kinds of different things that are going to be going on in a client's life um, or in your life if, if it's something that you're going to be going through yourself. And it's really important that we make sure that we've got things in place, whether it's self-care um, and obviously with self-care, there's a million different things we can do. Um, but it's super important that you know that client has ways that they're able to manage those things. And it's also important that that client's got a, a good support system which is something that actually not everyone has. Um, you know, I was very fortunate enough when I went through top surgery, I had a great support system in place, but it's not always possible. Um, and so what is really important for me is, you know, I can't be there for that client 24 seven. I'm not a family member, I am their coach, but actually what they are able to do is drop me a message if they've got any questions about it or they just need a little bit of, of a boost on that run up to surgery. Um, it's also really important that I'm able to be a part of any support system that they might have. So that's the first thing in stress management is making sure that we've got ways to deal with those stresses, whether it's something as simple as going for a walk um, or doing a bit of you know, deep breathing, reading a book, playing a video game, whatever it is that you use for self-care, we wanna make sure we've got those in place and also trying to help that client make sure that they've got a decent support system in place. Okay, so the other part to that maintenance phase is of course going to be our training and our nutrition and there isn't really any magic during this phase. Obviously, this client will have been working with me for probably you know, a, a fair amount of time um, by this point, will have been through all of the physique changes that we possibly can be during whatever period of time that we've worked together, whether that was um, working on you know, weight loss, um, muscle gain, or just recomp um, as a whole. So this final two to four weeks of maintenance phase, training wise, we're not looking to make any huge changes. In terms of stress management, what we might find is that the closer that we get towards that surgery, we pull volume down on training just to help accommodate um, with that period of stress management. Nothing crazy. Um, I mean, I remember before I went into top surgery, I didn't work out for a few days beforehand just because the idea of having DOMS after having surgery didn't fill me with joy. So that was something that I eradicated altogether, sort of like you know, three days before. But really there isn't too many changes that we need to make. That period of physique transformation is, is over for the time being. So our focus is on just maintaining things and making sure that we're recovering well um, and again, keeping stress nice and low. But obviously, as I said, we've also got food to consider as well. And as I went over um, earlier on in the video, it's gonna be slightly different for everyone, but there's a few different approaches that we can take. So if this client has been tracking their calories during their you know, time with me working on their physique, this might be something that we keep up. Um, we might just drop them down to you know, maintenance calories. We might have them just doing calories and protein and, and no carbs and fat, or maybe just calories. Really depends how they're feeling. If that's something that they're gonna find stressful or we just don't think is gonna be of huge benefit, um, what we can do is take away any kind of tracking in terms of calories. We can focus on just trying to get enough protein in. We don't even have to track it. We can just make sure that we're getting a, a good protein source with each meal. Focusing on getting a load of whole foods in, um, obviously that should always be a goal for somebody anyway um, before we're going into, into any kind of surgery. Health is of course our number one priority so we don't want to be smashing a Domino's pizza every night when we're making sure that we're getting food that our body is going to be able to digest well and is actually going to give us vitamins and minerals and keep us well before surgery. Um, so really again nutrition comes down to stress management. What is that client going to deal well with? What are you going to deal well with if, if this is you're watching this video for yourself and thinking about what you're going to do with your nutrition? Are you going to be able to carry on calor uh, calorie tracking? It's completely personal. Um, you might just find that actually you'd rather go something a little bit less stressful and uh, just make sure that you're getting a protein source of each meal, 
getting plenty of fruit and veg in there and trying to get as many just whole food sources as possible. Two things. First is that you're probably thinking, Sam, we just saw you load up the blue plates and now you're doing yellows. Correct. I put the wrong plates on. Second of all, there may be some uh, avid viewers of my content or clients watching this thinking, we thought you hated the bench press. I don't hate the bench press. <laughs> people, people say that quite a lot. Um, I normally do this session at another gym, not here. Um, I normally do a Smith press second, but I don't have a Smith machine here. So we're doing a barbell bench press. Um, I don't hate barbell bench press. Um, I do have some strong opinions and uh, a strong understanding of the movement to make me have those opinions, but um, just a little side note, I don't hate the bench press. So if you're building your chest for top surgery, you know, you can throw a barbell bench press in there. You've just got to know where to put it and what you're using it for. Supplementation. Um, so obviously, big disclaimer here. This is not me telling you to take these supplements. Obviously you want to be checking with your surgeon first. As with any advice from any random person on the internet, you're better off checking with your surgeon first because uh, they're, they're a bit more qualified than I am. Um, but regardless, three supplements it's worth considering. First one, Arnica. So Arnica is a natural herbal remedy. Um, you'll be able to get it online from obviously reputable places um, in like pharmacies. If you're in the UK, um, I got mine from Holland and Barrett before my surgery. So here I'm talking about the pill form. You can get like Arnica creams, but I'm talking right now ahead of surgery, talking about the little tiny, they're so small. They're like little, almost like, it tastes like sugar. It's like sugar pills. Um, basically it's gonna help with bruising. So I took these pre and also post surgery. Um, there's a bit of a, a schedule to it. Um, obviously if you're taking them, if, if your surgeon tells you to, he'll be able to help you with that schedule, but it also tells you on the box as well. Um, you have to take quite a, a good handful of these a day, pre and post surgery. Um, I took them before and after, and I had minimal, minimal bruising. Um, and other people that have used Arnica have, have said the same, so it definitely can help. Um, and that's worth looking into. Next two things, multivitamins, vitamin C. Now, these are things that actually most people would benefit from taking year round anyway. They're not gonna be there to replace whole foods. It's not like you have a multivit and you don't need to ever eat an apple again. Um, what I see these as is backups. They're gonna be there on the days that maybe you miss out on some, multivit on some vitamins and minerals from your diet. Um, and same with vitamin C, obviously, Going into surgery, you want your immune system to just be in the best place possible. Um, and yes, obviously the most important thing is making sure that body composition is in a good place. You've been doing your training, you've been doing your cardio, your diet as a whole is in a good place on the run up to surgery. But if we can get some backups in there with some things like multivitamins and vitamin C, we're just gonna be in the best place possible. But again, check with your surgeon, um, make sure that you're gonna be all good to take those on the run up to surgery. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the last topic of the video, which is post-surgery. Um, so obviously when a client is post-surgery, they're not gonna be with me as a client. Um, they might come back to me around about six weeks post-surgery when they're ready to step back into the gym again. Um, obviously depending on when their, their surgeon gives them the go-ahead. But for that initial recovery period, of course, they're, they're not gonna be with me as a, a paying client. Um, so we can have a discussion before they leave about my experience post-surgery, what I did, um, but we can also make sure that we've got the details on what that surgeon wants them to do as well. One of those things might be some stretching and just movement-based stuff. Um, and again, a big disclaimer is needed here because this is gonna vary so much based on surgeon to surgeon. The experience with my surgeon is very different to what a lot of other surgeons do. 
So I had my top surgery in 2018 with Dr. Andrew Yelland um, here in the UK in Torquay. Yelland is very, very big on stretching post-surgery and I was actually doing um, exercises, just body weight exercises, just like moving my arms and things like that, which is obviously incredibly difficult at first, um, but you get better at it as the weeks go on. Um, and I was doing those from 24 hours post-surgery. Um, some surgeons say no movement at all for like six weeks. So it's gonna vary a lot and you've got to check with your surgeon and you've got to be happy with what your surgeon's doing. Of course you're gonna be, cause that's why you've chosen them. Um, what I'm gonna do is drop a video down below of the exercises that I was um, told to do post-surgery. So again, I was doing these 24 hours post-surgery, very roughly to begin with, you, you don't have tons of movement, um, but once your surgeon gives you the go ahead to do some kind of movement work, you can show them that video and can say, will these ones be of any use? And they can obviously say yes or no to those. Okay, so last up, finishing on the topic of recovery. We've got the return back to training, the one thing that we're all probably the most excited for. Um, recovery is really exciting, seeing you know the reveal and, and everything like that. It's all really exciting, but after a while of sitting down and doing nothing, it gets very boring very quickly. Um, and if your surgeon is like mine, and it, it generally seems to be the same a lot of the time, it's, it's usually six weeks return back to exercise, but again, of course, check with your surgeon. Um, so for me, it was literally nothing at all other than like the stretches that he gave me, those little exercises um, for six weeks. So it made my return back to the gym for six weeks. This is where some clients might come back. They might want to carry on working with me on their physique goals. Some of them might not need to. They want to carry on on their own or you know whatever. Um, it's completely up to them. During this period of time, it's just about getting you back to where you left off. It's going to obviously take time, Recovery is different for everyone. For myself, I was probably back to 100% 10 weeks post-surgery, so I did about a month in the gym building back up again. Um, it just takes time, takes patience. Don't rush it. Don't do yourself an injury. Don't ruin your lovely new chest. Um, just take your time, build it back up gradually, um, and before you know it, you'll be back to training at 100% again with a perfect chest. Okay, so there we have it. That is everything that I do to take a client up through to top surgery. Um, we've gone through that timeline, so we've got to make sure that we've actually given ourselves enough time during that period of quote unquote physique transformation, weight loss, muscle gain, whether it's like a physique recomp. Obviously, we're following all the same normal rules that we would with anybody else. Um, if our goal is to build chest tissue, obviously we're gonna have a training plan that is gonna put quite a bit more volume towards that. Um, but really, other than that, there, there isn't too much of a difference. We just gotta make sure we're giving ourselves enough time. We've also got that maintenance phase that I spoke about where our focus turns purely to health, making sure that we're managing stress and just giving our body what it needs. We talked about supplementation, three different supplements um, that I would consider taking, um, two of them year round anyway. Arnica, take on the run up to and post-surgery um, with your surgeon's permission. And same with that post-surgery recovery. It's gonna be varying for everyone in terms of what your surgeon says, but also in terms of how you recover. Sometimes it can just be roll of the dice. Um, but one thing is for certain, you will eventually be back in the gym doing what you were before, um, but this time with a shiny new chest and some cool looking nipples. Uh, so yeah, that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. If you're interested in working with me on the run-up to your top surgery, the link is in the description down below. Take you to my coaching page where you can find out more. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.